Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the key things I've learned from the most successful artists on earth. Now, these artists I'm talking about are the Damien Hurst, the Takashi Murakamas, the Calls, like the big, big names. The ones who basically kind of run the art industry at this point. And by the way, if you don't know who I am, my name is Droy Henry. I'm the founder of Artist Rise. And in the last year, we worked with over 900 artists at this point, which is something I'm super proud of, helping them sell their artwork consistently online. And I create these videos, hopefully, with the mindset that you will get so much freaking value that you'll think, holy crap, this guy's actually pretty cool. And then we end up working together at some point in the near future. But with that being said, let's let's just get into this video. So I'm going to talk about the five. Yeah, I got my notes here, by the way. So just bear with me. The five key things I've learned from some of the most successful artists. And by the way, let me describe success for this video. When I say successful artists, I'm talking about successful artists financially, one, and who build success from the people. Let me explain. So, like, there's the successful artists who've been handpicked, who've been fed, what is called, like, the gold spoon, silver spoon, whatever it means, right? I'm not talking about those artists. I'm not talking about the ones who end up getting noticed by some critic and that critic picked them up and now they're in galleries all over the world and they sell their works for millions i'm talking about the ones who literally create phenomenal art their art speak for itself and because of that that's what led to the amount of success they have and i want to talk about the five key things i've learned from those artists so you'll start putting it towards your own career so you can start having similar success with that being said i don't like to waste much time so i'm kind of jump straight into it so here's the thing First and foremost, I want to talk a little bit about what success look like. So success look like is getting to a point of success from creating really beautiful art and marketing yourself as an artist that gets a lot of recognition and make people, one, notice you, and then two, want to purchase your artwork, and then even three, the burp always happen, and then three, want to take that artwork and turn into an investment. So I'm gonna talk about um, how those artists got there, at least the key things I took away from that. So we're gonna get straight into it. First thing first is they all create unique work. Like for example, I'm gonna just use Cause. Cause work is extremely, extremely, extremely unique. Like I, at least me, I never seen another artist before Cause who create work similar to Cause. Very, very, very unique work. Same for artists like Jeff Koons. And if you don't know these artists, you should look them up. Um, what I do is I put some of their pictures on the screen here. So, Catherine, put a picture of Calls, a decent picture of, like, one of his paintings. Everybody knows the sculptures. But put, like, some of his paintings on the screen right here. And then artists like Jeff Koons. Catherine, do the same with Jeff Koons. Put his balloon sculptures on the screen right here. And then you have artists like Damien Hurst. Put, put some of the um sculpture, put some of his butterfly paintings for me, and then also put um the shop. So if you just seen those artworks, right? The artists that create that, the artists that create those works had to take their mind to an entire new place. Like that, they get extremely, extremely, extremely creative when creating those pieces. Now. I'm not going to talk about how to create really creative and unique work. I already created a video on that. Just search my channel. I want to say it's titled something like how to create great art or something. But it's on this channel. More importantly, I want you to understand what you need to do. And you can go find a videos on how to do it. Now, let's talk about what great art looks like. What great art looks like is usually something that haven't been repeated. Or if you are repeating something, it's done at a much, much, much higher stature. What I mean by this, there's a lot of people that do portraits. That's fine. But imagine the portraits you create are like wall size. Like, imagine the portraits you create is the size of this little, well, not little, but this big artwork behind me. Because of the size alone, people are going to give that artwork a lot of recognition. It's going to be hard to ignore. So I understand in today's time, it could be really, really complicated because there are so many creators on earth to really create something that's really, really, really unique. And if you can't create something that's really, really unique, you need to do it at a much higher stature, whether that's you're going bigger, 
whether that's your work being, I don't want to say detailed, but much um, more precise, right? And I'm going to even talk about the difference between being detailed and precise also. But you want overall that work to have a higher stature if it's going to be something that you created, that you've seen created before, or you just want to get extremely unique with your work. I talked about this. The best ways to become extremely unique with your work is to create works with new mediums. So getting really, really creative with the mediums you use. Think outside the box. Gold leaf is not a new medium. Cutting your paper or lighting a piece of the canvas on fire is not a new medium and it's not creative. It's actually pretty cliche and saturated. So really, really, really think outside the box when it comes to these creatives. I mean, when it comes to these mediums. Now, with that being said, if you start using those more creative mediums to create your work, it's automatically going to separate you from everybody else. And here's the thing. In the world, like today, with so much art online, so many creators online, you have to cut through the fact. Like, you have to, like, carve out your area. So you got to ask yourself, like, what makes you different? Here's the thing. In a typical year, I talk to about 4,000 artists, my team as a whole. Me personally, I probably last year talked to 600 or so. But here's the thing. So many artists tell me, oh, Gerard, I know my work great. I see some of the artists work online and I realize like my work better than theirs. But then when you ask like, why? What makes your work so much better? What makes your work great? And there's usually no real answer. It's only because you feel your work is great. So you, what I want you to do is really, really take a moment to ask yourself, like, what makes my work way better than everybody else's work? Like, why will my work stand out? I'm not talking about somebody purchasing. Strictly stand out from everybody else's work online. Basically, what's your wow factor? If a five-year-old kid, a six-year-old kid was walking past and there was 20 artworks on the wall, what will make that kid stop at your artwork and say, like, wow, this is freaking amazing. Holy crap. I can tell you right now, you put 20 artworks lined up, and then you could sit Damien Hurst, shock in a tank anywhere, anywhere in that row of 20, and that six-year-old kid will instantly stop and say, wow, this is freaking crazy. Same with Jeff Koons. You can line up 20 artworks, and then you can put Jeff Koon freaking balloon-sized dog that's freaking the size of this entire living room in that same lineup, and that kid's going to walk past every last one of those artworks and go straight to Jeff Koon work and say, wow, this is absolutely insane. That's the and that's what you want. Same with like Kahindi Wiley. You put and that's a painting. You put one of Kahindi Wiley paintings up. The level of detail with those flowers and a level of like the size and the horse. And when you look at his work, that kid will literally stop and he tracks it. Six years old and say, Wow. So you gotta ask yourself, like, what's your wow factor for your work? Because just because you say my work is good, I don't know why these other artists work. Is I'm um, selling my work better than this? It don't necessarily make your work better. Fun fact, after talking with a lot of artists, the most talented artists that create the most beautiful work are the ones that think they work not as good. Interestingly enough, I just talked to an artist not too long ago who create phenomenal work. Phenomenal work. Actually, I'm going to shout him out on this video. We just started working together, so he just joined our program named Oscar. And I'm going to literally show you his work. When I talk to Oscar, Oscar don't even know how freaking phenomenal his work is. And I'm telling you phenomenal, I mean absolutely phenomenal work. I could see a kid stopping in their tracks and like, holy crap, like, wow. So I'm going to show you a picture of Oscar's work. I'm, I'm literally putting Oscar on a, on a, um, basically, he don't know I'm doing this. He, I, we just started working again. I probably don't have permission to do this, but hey. We'll ask for forgiveness later. So this is Oscar's work. Okay, if you want to go check out his work, don't don't check it out during this video. Check it out like after. But his, his Instagram is O Z Z Z Z Y L A. So O Z Z Y. L A. But 
basically getting back on topic, you want to create work that's very, very, very unique. And if you don't have the most unique work, then you got to have it at a different level of stature. Like that work has to be phenomenal. Whether the colors are just much brighter, it's much more detail, it's much bigger, something have to basically separate your work from everybody else. Now, the next thing, every artist that's like extremely successful, I'm not talking about like kind of, I'm talking about like extremely 500 million type success, they create big work. They also create small work, but they're not afraid to go big. They actually embrace going big. They prefer to go big. They genuinely believe the bigger the work, the better. Now, the question I always get is like, but Gerard, if I create bigger work, how I'm going to sell it? People can't afford bigger work. Trust me. People can afford big work. Here's the thing. You can sell the work for 10 grand. The amount of people that can afford a $10,000 artwork is insane. Here's the rule of thumb I always tell people. Well, it's not really a rule of thumb, but here's what I always tell artists. They say, hey, but I don't think people can afford 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 10,000, 12,000 works. One of the most successful companies on earth today is Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton clothing company is one of the most successful companies on earth. Louis Vuitton prices range anywhere from, let's say, 600 on an extremely low end to 30,000, 40,000 for certain products. Anytime you walk into a big city, I live in Houston, Texas. The only store who always have a line outside the store is Louis Vuitton. Those same people, every single day that's going by 4,000 bags, 6,000 bags, 10,000 bags can afford your work. So they can afford the work. But you have to build the value in your work, and that happens over time. But that starts with also going bigger. So you should definitely, definitely, definitely be creating bigger work if you can. If you can't afford bigger canvases, start with canvas roll. When I was in art school, and I'm talking about high school, I couldn't afford bigger canvases. So I used to just buy canvas roll. I forget, like, what the sizes were. But it was, like, you get, like, 4 feet by 30 feet. Or, like, 5 feet by 30. 40 feet it was crazy so i could take just a canvas roll paint on a canvas roll create really really beautiful works and then sell just the canvas rolls now they literally get you started but you could take one canvas roll that you may spend 50 bucks on however much it was at the time and you could create literally let's say four maybe four four foot by five foot artworks something like that at that point, you're in a dough. Like, you're in a good place. Don't quote my math, but you, you get where I'm going with this. So, you need unique work. If you can't create unique work, you need to be done at a very high stature. Like, your work have to be better than everybody else. It's that simple. And then second, that work that you got that's better than everybody else needs to be bigger. Overall, what am I saying at the moment? I'm simply saying that your work needs to be able to market itself. If your artwork can market itself you will automatically gain attention. Like if you look at the most successful artists on Instagram, not in life, they still in life, but not in life on Instagram. If you look at those most successful artists, Instagram accounts, I'm talking the ones that got a million followers and more, their work speak for itself. Like their work is usually over the top. Like it's beautiful. I'm talking about like the James Jeans. The CJ Hendrys. Like these artists work are just absolutely just breathtaking. So you want to be creating, once again, beautiful work. Here's the third, third, fourth. Here's the next thing. You have to have a very high level of precision in your work. Now, there's a difference between detail and precision. You see, when you think about detail as a visual artist, you think about how in-depth your artwork may be. Now, when you think about detail, you think like hyper-realism. So you may say, Gerard, I'm not a hyper-realistic artist. I do abstract. I do surreal, and that's all fine. I'm not talking about detail. I'm talking about precision. Precision basically means like the outlook you're going for, for your artwork, you're striving specifically for that outlook. Yes, you always going to hear the artist going to say, but you should just flow, whatever, however it come out. If you love it, cool. That's just your creative side. Like, that's bull crap. That's really bull crap. The people that listen to that is, is just listen to ludicrous. 
And here's why it's bullcrap. Art is like a sport. Like, if you want the best work, how you know if it's great? Is it what you was looking for in the beginning? If it's not, they need to be better in it. It's that simple. You see really successful artists. I'm talking the ones, the, once again, the Jeff Coons. The calls, I, I, there's a documentary with calls, and he talk about how certain colors, let's say blue, blue would get painted over and over like 60 times to get the level of blue he want. Like he want that blue to not be transparent whatsoever. So he say like literally he'll paint it, let it dry, paint it, let it dry, paint it, let it dry 60 times so that blue don't be transparent. So you see it, it just look like a very solid, flat blue. But that's what I mean when I say precision, right? Precision is how you want that work to look, you're really striving for that. You're not cutting any corners. And as visual artists, I was there. I knew it. And I went to school for it, two separate schools. We all would cut um, corners. And we can't kind of get it how we want. We're kind of like, like oh, I can't get it. This is fine. If that's the case, then it's going to hold you back. Like, don't cut any corners on your work. Even if you're an abstract artist, whatever you may have in mind, like, strive for that. Even if it's very expressionism, like an expression style, and you're kind of just going with the flow. If that's something you don't like, like, adjust that. But you should be striving for precision with your work. Overall, no matter what the medium may be, you should be striving for precision. When you look at these artists' work, there's usually nothing misplaced. I'm talking about the most successful artists. Everything is exactly where it's at for a reason. It's almost like it was calculated afterwards. Like, I literally watched a video of Damien Hirsch throwing paint out of a canvas. And the paint hit the canvas wrong, I guess. I'm assuming because they all look the same, to be honest. And he literally went to go, like, pick the paint up because, like, oh, crap. I don't want that there. But it was a complete abstract eight um piece with maybe a thousand paint um drops thrown at it. But this particular one, where that color landed, he was like, oh, this just ruined it. And he was to try to like get it up off the canvas. That's what I mean when I say precision. So you want to be very, very precise when it comes to the outcome of your work. Where we at? My favorite part. Every really, really, really successful artist, they love the ideal of business. They love the ideal of sales. And they love the ideal of money. Fun fact, only the artists who are not doing well have a hard time with money or they say you shouldn't worry about the money. The most successful artists, they always trying to maximize how much they can sell their artwork for. And they always looking to sell their artwork any chance they get. They always look to profit as much. Literally, Andy Warhol said the best part of art is the art of business. So, like, you want to be not just creating work, but you want to fall in love with actually selling and marketing your work. Getting your work out there. Getting people purchasing it. Getting people pins on it. Because that's how you actually move forward. Like, that's what changed your life. Funny enough, I never see a successful artist say money not important. Only the artists who are struggling say money not important. You see the ones who never have the money say, oh, you shouldn't worry about the money. But the money is what makes the world go wrong. Like, that's how you pay your kids, pay for your kids' tuition. That's how you get your kids through school. That's how you eat healthier meals and live longer. Like, Finance is a huge part of life at this point. That's just the reality. So you definitely, definitely want to start really dialing in the business side of your work. Because that's what these artists do. They're going all in on the business side. Damien Hirsch used to go viral from taking his work to auctions himself because he didn't want to split the um difference with whoever that commissioner or however that may work be. Like, that's how serious it gets. And these guys are obsessed with it. Like, they want the nice things. They want the nice car. They want the big home. Like, for some reason, I talk to so many artists, and so many artists are afraid to say they want something nice. Usually artists say, oh, I just want to create art because I love it. Because that's the, what's the word I'm looking for? That's what everyone tell artists they should they should um do. Uh, that's how they should view their artwork. You should not worry about how much money you make. If you weren't about much money, you're like, you're not a serious artist. You're not really passionate. 
You got artists like Damien Hurst going to buy boats. Jeff Koons having beautiful, like beautiful, beautiful um, design homes. Even James Jean driving the nicest cars, the fastest cars, and they are fulfilled. So they have a really, 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 really amazing relationship with money. They love business. And they love sales. They don't feel icky, nasty, or whatever you want to call it when it comes to doing business and selling their work. Which is cool. Where we at? I just had a conversation. I paused for a second because I didn't even know if I was going to really include this or not. I just had a conversation with an artist I work with. And we were just talking about, like, selling your artwork versus, like, keeping your artwork and being stern on prices. She's going to see this video, and she's going to be like, oh, my God, Joy, give me a break. <laughs> I've been beating her up about this for the last few days. I'm not going to say her name because I will be picking on her. But here's the thing. Really successful artists do not, I'm going to repeat this, they do not love their work. They're not overly obsessive when it comes to their work. I'm going to say this again. Really successful artists are not crazy obsessed over their work. You see, I talk to a lot of entry-level artists. And entry-level, I don't mean like your actual artist. I'm talking about just where you're adding your career as far as sales. Right? So majority of visual artists are just entry-level artists. So I talk to a lot of entry-level artists. And when talking to entry-level artists, I hear artists say, Oh, this, this artwork just means so much to me, I can't sell it. I have to keep this artwork. It have to be the right price for me to let this artwork go. I see artists say, oh, I'm not going to sell this work because, like, this this, this just mean too much. Like, I got to get this price and that's it. Or some artists say, I'm not selling this work, period. Like, it's just that important to me. This work is not being sold. You ask freaking Jeff Koons, Damien Hurst, Takash Murakami, James Jean, they're, like, everything for sale. They're like, you could buy this freaking shirt off me if you want. Like, everything for sale for the right price. And the right price not always the listed price. I want you to understand this. The right price is just the right price. Keep in mind, they don't even have a price on their artwork when they go to the auction. They're like, I just want whatever, whoever going to pay the most. I'm happy with that. They don't say, no, I need 40000000 million. They're like, look, whoever want to pay the most, let it, let it freaking go. Sell it because <laughs> they understand, like, I'm the artist, I could always create more work as the artist. I had this conversation with Jonah. If you don't know, Jonah's an artist, I work with. he's a photographer. And um, last year, he did extremely, extremely, extremely good in sales. I have an interview with him about how he crossed a hundred thousand in a 30 day time span, which was freaking amazing. But it was talk- I was talking with Jonah, I don't know if I should be saying this or not, but this, this is our little safe place. <laughs> Jonah prices get as expensive as 45 grand for a single piece. This is actually one of Jonah photos right here behind me, which is a beautiful. You can see the size of it. It's freaking huge. I think it's like 72, 64 by 96, something like that. But anyway, Jonah, like, I'm like Jonah. If you have a piece that's 45,000, are you like stuck on 45,000? And for a long time, he was like, I'm stuck on it. Like, that's the price. Now he's like, it's 45000 but mm, somebody come to me with 40000 and I'm feeling good that day. I'm not going to beat him up about it. I'm taking a forty grand Because he understands at this point, he's the creator. Like, you could always create more art. Like, your brain have an endless amount of ideas, unless you have artist block, but you can get out of that. But for the most part, your brain have an endless amount of ideas. So that being said, what you have in so many freaking ideas, you should not be holding on to one idea like this is close to my heart. Like you should not be holding on to one artwork waiting for the perfect price. Like freaking sell it because I can tell you right now, that artwork that you think is so close to your heart and is so amazing and is so phenomenal in five years, you'll be willing to give it away. That's not an artwork. If you're watching this video, what you are, that's not an artwork you created five years ago. That you could say, oh my God, that's the most phenomenal art piece I ever created. I was, I'm so happy I still got that piece to this day. There's not one artist, including you, that could say that. 
Because after three, four years, you start to feel like it's old your own self. You're going to start to feel like your work became better. You're going to start to feel like your work, your artwork is worth more. So at that point, the, I see artists, their artworks for three, four, five years ago. They're like, dude, I'll take anything for them. But three, four, five years ago, in that time, no, they needed the absolute best price. What I'm saying is, don't be too hard up on yourself on these prices for your artwork or like trying to keep artwork, trying to hold it because it just means so much to me. Like, sell it and just create more. That's all you have to do. Sell a freaking work and create more work because you're the creator. That simple. So, <clears throat> let me recap. So, if you really want to create really, 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 really phenomenal work and have a phenomenal art career, be unique. And if you can't be unique, do it at a very high stature. Like, create phenomenal work. If you're going to be an artist that's creating portraits like everybody else, make your portrait so realistic that it's, like, extremely jaw-dropping. Right? Like, if you're going to be an artist that uses bright colors, make those colors freaking pop off the paper. Or just simply be unique. And the best way to be unique is just create new mediums. That's simple. Now, while you're also being unique, go big. Go big or go your butt home. Because there's no room for small. Big gets attention. It's that simple. The bigger the home, the more attention you get. The bigger the art piece. The more, I could create an art piece the size of this wall and just put two circles on it. A blue circle and a purple circle. And just put it on my wall. And if I put that on my wall, people are gonna people are gonna look at it like it's worth ten thousand ten thousand dollars. Like it's that simple. Simply because of the size. But if I create a piece that's this size and I do the same, people are gonna walk over it. They're gonna think a kid did it. That's the reality. So create bigger work. Why are you creating bigger work? If you're going to be doing this and you want to do it full time, become precise with your work. Sketch the ideal out freaking 10, 15 times if you have to before you go put it on canvas. But when you put that piece on that canvas, make sure that piece come out exactly how you want it to come out. If you look at any extremely successful artist, any artist with over a million followers, you're not, I promise you, you're not going to find a blemish in their work. It's that simple. You're not going to find something kind of misplaced, color slightly off, like it won't happen. Because they're extremely precise. You look at freaking Oscar work, O-Z-Z, Z-Z. <laughs> Oscar Instagram is O-Z-Z-Y-L-A. When you go look at his own work, precision. That guy's going to freaking crush it. I can tell you right now, like, his work sell itself. He just missing the process. That freaking guy right there, you're going to see me do an interview with him in about three to four months because he's going to crush it. Hold my work. We just started working together, like, this past week. O-Z-Z-Y-L-A. But be precise when it comes to your work. And then love the art of business. Fall in love with selling your work. Fall in love with doing business. Fall in love with freaking money. Become obsessed with it. Drown yourself in it. Go swim in it. People say money is evil. I say no. P evil people do evil things with money once they receive it. Amazing people, once they get money, could change the freaking world. But you need it first. So you have to get the money first. So become obsessed with it. If you want that nice car. Focus on getting that nice car. I love cars myself, and I love to see artists love nice cars and nice clothes and nice homes. What's next? Oh, yeah. And stop loving your work so much. People say, like, my art is like my kids. No, it's not. That's not the case. You probably could have... Ex I mean, like, if you go extremely crazy, maybe 10 kids in your life, right, in today's time. Some people have 12. As an artist, you can create a freaking 300 pieces. Like, don't be too stuck on that one piece. Sell that piece. Don't hold it close to your art. I seen this on a video. Video went viral. It was on Instagram. I don't remember the artist's name. She created the beautiful artwork. Beautiful artwork. And after she got done, actually, this was my this was one of my artists. 
<laughs> this was Danielle Tomlinson. Several artists named Danielle Tomlinson art on Instagram. Actually, I tell a fun story about Danielle Tomlinson that wrap up both these points. So when me and Danielle Tomlinson first met, we had a call. This was in twenty in the twenty nineteen, maybe early twenty twenty. So we're in that ballpark. And I asked her what's her goals. And she's like, Oh, I just want to create art full time. And that's the goal. Then I like bought out. Like, no, what do you really want? Like, just tell me, like, what do you really want? What'll really make you happy? She's like, Well, to be honest, I want the nice home. I want the nice car. I want the nice clothes. I want the fancy life. I want my own beautiful studio. And I could see how her face lit up when she said that. And I told her, like, if that's what you want, go after that. Because I could tell, like, that's what makes you happy. Today, she have all those things. She worked really hard. She have all those things. But it was her. I seen a piece on her Instagram uh, artwork, and she showed it. And then right when she walked off, she, like, dropped the artwork. She ain't drop it, but she, like, she let it fall. I might see if, um, no, I'm not going to put Catherine through the work of trying to find it. Actually, yeah, Catherine. Go find it. I, it, it had a pink background, so that helped you out a bit. Did it, um, then y'all time. And then, like, just put that little snippet of her work. I'm looking for it right now. Just put that little snippet of her work. Of her, like, showing it, then, like, letting it fall on this video. But with that being said, don't, don't, don't get too caught up in your work, right? Don't get too caught up in your work. Love making the money from it and sell it. What else I got? And then after that, um, go bigger. Because bigger is just simply better when it comes to selling your artwork. Get unique. As long as you do those things, as well as be um, precise, you should do well. You should do well. Good night.